The joint operation by Kampala Capital City Authority, KCCA, and the Uganda National Bureau of Standards led to this butchery in the Kampala suburb of Ntinda. Their search uncovered two bottles of a chemical yet to be identified. The crackdown follows media reports that unscrupulous butchers were using cancer-causing preservative known as formalin. We are also getting suspicions that people are using chemicals to preserve the meat. So far we haven't come across anyone doing so, but we have come across some people at Ntinda Market who are using some chemicals to chase away fries. Also arrested in the same suburb is a fishmonger. KCCA officials found in his possession a bottled chemical. KCCA's health inspection and education supervisor, Dr. Emilian Ahimbisibwe, says all butcheries found operating in unsanitary conditions would be closed. Munda enyama, frowa etekwa kubera ya tires, otekwa kubera mu first aid box, hmm? na mazi kato okwata sente, toma nye omonte sente zuzivu dewa, otekwa kubera muna maza onaweko. Imagine from the festive season, where more than 400 animals were slaughtered daily, some butchers say the crackdown is unfair. Bandi gamente wa guwabula muku gila wano, utudongo sao, na efe nabako zechi, batu gade obukazi. A total of nine butcheries, some from the Kampala suburb of Kalere, were closed. And NTV, Kampala. It is business as usual for many of those who deal in meat and dairy products, especially milk. The current market price for a kilogram of meat is 10,000 shillings, while a liter of milk goes for between 2,500 and 3,000 shillings. Both these products are highly perishable, and this is the reason why some business people have opted to use preservatives to give them a longer shelf life. Formalin is a liquid drug manufactured to preserve dead tissues by killing bacterium that cause decay. It is used together with other chemicals to embalm dead bodies. Professor John Muyonga, the Dean of Studies at the School of Food, Technology, Nutrition and Bioengineering, speaks on the dangers of humans consuming formalin. Contamination of formalin or adulteration with formalin uh, may uh, damage lungs, damage your digestive system over time, maybe damage organs like your kidney and liver. Professor Muyonga says formalin has a pungent smell that is detectable and if one uses it to preserve food, it will be in very low quantities that can sometimes be unnoticeable. If you go to a, a butcher, for example, and the butcher is not chilling your meat, and yet the meat looks very fresh. You have to be suspicious, yes. Does the formalin have a visible effect on the food on which it is used? Professor Muyonga says it is only with keen attention that this is noticeable. It is rather unreliable to say that uh, uh, by just looking we'll be able to tell this has formalin and this doesn't. And the formalin, you know, assuming somebody is injecting it a little, that means it's even not on the surface, but then the spoilage is not going to happen because you have formalin. But meat changes color from the time of slaughter to the time it gets spoiled. And uh, if you are a crit you're critical, you will see that meat will, at one time, it's very bright red, then it is pale, 
um, brownish. He has advice on the many possible ways food can be preserved without the use of drugs. Like using of salt. When you salt your meat, it will stay longer. With just 25,000 shillings, I've been able to buy this 40% bottle of formalin, which is reportedly being used to preserve foodstuffs that we consume and could be harmful to human health. But with the ease at which I've been able to buy this bottle raises questions for authorities that regulate availability of drugs to the public. Walter Mwesije, NTV, Kampala. All right, let's get to our big story. And on the big story, we ask the question, how safe is the meat you consume? Um, because you go to these uh, different places, the butcheries, and you buy meat. It looks fresh, but is it? Let me get to our guests. Uh, we have with us Dr. Emilian Ahimbisiwe. He's a uh, supervisor and health inspection and education uh, from KCCA. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. We also have with us Captain Dennis Obresazi. He's the spokesperson of the Uganda Abattoirs Union, but he's also the managing director of Nsoba Slaughterhouse Limited. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, sir. Doctor, let me start with you. I know that KCCA did, you know, make rounds around Kampala, different butcheries, trying to ascertain the safety of this meat. What did you find? You know, uh, the operation didn't start the last week. Mm. Uh, it started in 2015. In 2015, we were that people were using a certain concoction uh, to kill fries in the butcheries. <coughs> mm. And uh, it was of our concern because we didn't know the effects of the chemical on the meat. Because when you are killing fries in a, in a, a butchery, some drops, droplets can land on meat. So we sampled 40 samples around the city. And 12.5% uh, of those samples had traces of the concoction that was being used now to kill fries. And this concoction, when we took it to the government analytical laboratory, it was found to be a, an insecticide in the names of the trade name chlorophenvifos. So it is an organophosphorus. So since that time, we have been removing them. Whenever, every day, we have teams that are in the field, both at the division level and headquarters, we have also a mobile team that moves around. At least we set a Wednesday as a veterinary day for both health inspectorate staff and veterinary staff to combine as a one health group to move to all the butcheries. And you know, we have more than 2,000 butcheries. That's why now uh, we wanted at least people to regulate themselves. We can't reach all of those 2,000 butchers or more uh, at the time we would want now to be covered. So it is not to say that we started last week. Mm. The operation on meat hygiene has been ongoing. And we have been doing it to ensure that the people of Kampara at least have or some meat. That's what we have been doing. Okay, let me bring Captain here in. Um, still on the question of the insecticides that uh, doctor talks about, use, you know, to, to kill flies. Flies can be a disturbance. Many times you would find those uh, butchers trying to hit the flies away. I guess they got tired of this and they decided to use that concoction he talks about. So as the Uganda Abattoirs Union, because you speak for that union, but you're also a managing director of a slaughterhouse, did you know about this concoction being used? No, I didn't know. What I know is that this concussion tsunami, one time was being sold around our place. We chased it away and we chased the man away. It is basically used to kill flies. This point, the butchers who use it to, to kill flies, we are not aware maybe because of ignorance that it, some of it may land on the meat like he's saying. They are not doing it intentionally. It was a mistake which <coughs> must be collected. And it's very unfortunate there is a body, an association, which formed up themselves as the Kabuta. And they say they took over the responsibility of ensuring meat safety in the abattoirs. 
they have not done their job. Instead, they have betrayed the community. How comes that tsunami was found in the abat in the butchers when these people are in existence? So, what's your responsibility then as the union? Because you're saying the responsibility is for Kabuta. I wonder what that is in full. But you seem to be relegating your responsibility because you see as. Uh, the Uganda Abattoirs Union, I would like to think that uh, you, you have membership. I don't know if it's compulsory for every abattoir to be a member, but you, you kind of look out for certain specificities. You're trying to be sure. What's the hygiene of these See, people? How safe is the meat they're selling? I would like to think that's your responsibility. Yes, partly. Mm. Is, but there's a difference between an abattoir mm. and a butcher. What is a butcher? A butcher, this is a man who trades in meat. In kilos. Who buys from the abattoir? From abattoirs. us. Mm -hmm. He buys good meat, which has been well inspected by Dr. M. Siwa's team. He takes it to his butcher. When Kabuta was formed, he was supposed What's to What's Kabuta? It is a, a union. It is an, an association. It is called eh? Kampala. It's, it's a long name. But they, 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 they say they are responsible for the, the, the butchers, they even charge them money. They give, they take, the, they give them their banners. They want to force each and every uh, uh, butcher to deal with them. They almost want to overpass the council. That they can, can do everything. Now you can see how much they have messed us up. For us in the abattoirs, unions for the abattoirs, not for the butchers, there is good meat coming out of all abattoirs all over the country. Well respected by responsible people. Uh, the city council, uh, who has got the veterinary officers and uh, health inspectors. It is unfortunate. Now we are going to take it up. We are going to make it our responsibility to visit these, uh, these uh, butchers as uh, we, the Abattoir's Union to ensure that our meat is not given a bad name. Doctor, uh, when he says that uh, all abattoirs, you know, they churn out good meat, do you concede? You know, we inspect animals when they arrive at the abattoir mm -hmm. to make sure that they are good candidates for slaughter. Those ones that we feel that they are moribund, they can't be allowed now to enter the slaughter, slaughtering line. So, after slaughtering, we cut out post-mortem. We have staff in all abattoirs in Kampara who do meat inspection and certify it for human consumption. All meat that is stamped by a stamp which has KCCA and Maif, you find that stamp is one. It has KCCA Maif on is top Ministry of, of Agriculture, Agriculture. Okay. because sure, exactly. Maif is the one that provided those stamps. Mm. But they put every district has its own. So for KCCA, they put KCCA. Down they put Maif. So every abattoir in Kampara, the meat that leaves it has to be inspected. We have competent meat inspectors there, paid by KCCA, not paid by them. And they pay, uh, I'm the, the one who supervises them. So, even at one time, like uh, last year, we had to condemn nine animals, like at Stabato. Nine animals in one day. They came and were suspected poisoning due to Rantaman Kamara because all of the meat was yellow. And we had now to, you know, taking a stand to condemn nine animals, which means that. We are doing people there are doing a, a good job. If they had not, if they were not competent, I would not have known it. But I have now it had to reach my office because it was too huge <coughs> a loss for the farmer and for the trader. So, but we we said uh, safety is first, safety is more important than the economic well being of a person. We had now to condemn them and incinerate them. Captain, talk to us about the hygiene in your abattoirs. Because again, there was some time when there was some petty fogging between you folks and the authorities about the hygiene. You get to this place and uh, it's a food place because meat is food. But the place looked like <laughs> a sty of sorts. And uh, we, we have some pictures as we kept moving around some of these abattoirs. 
Has that situation changed since then? You see, it has changed a lot and it's bound to change to a better place. The only problem we have is that KCC has delayed in uh, passing our pl physical plans. We want to put in place a fantastic in international abattoirs. What is hygiene? In the abattoirs, we have two areas. We have a dirty area and a clean area. When you come and take the picture of what we refer to as a dirty area, mm. you find blood, eh? you may even find some dung. So you may think the place it remains like that. When you slaughter an animal, it gives off blood. Some dung may come out. That is referred to internationally as a dirty area. We have slaughter. And after slaughter, removing the intestines, uh, turning this cow into a carcass, they are doing their inspections. We transfer this meat to a clean area, a showroom where you buy that meat. You see, what is a cow? The cow has got fishes, the cow has got blood, and that's why you see in the, in, the, in the formation of an abattoir, there are those two areas, the clean and that area. Otherwise, if we are not reaching the standards, not cause exactly, they will not be coming to inspect our meat, they would even have closed us up. But at least we reach the minimum standards of the meat hygiene in the abattoirs. Doctor, talk to us about this talk of formalin. It's been a scare around town and uh, one of my colleagues did a story on formalin. We understand mm -hmm. some of this meat is contaminated with formalin because mm -hmm. my basic un science understanding of formalin is that it's used to preserve dead bodies so that they don't rot. And now we hear it's being used to preserve this meat so that it doesn't rot. You find meat which should have gone bad already but it looks fresh. Why? Because there's some formalin therein. Unfortunately, I've also heard about it. So, as I told you, it started in 2015. And we have never encountered <coughs> meat that is rest with formalin. Is that so? Yes. I'm being sincere. We have never met meat that is rest with formalin. Even when the studies which we carried out in 2015, we had to take them to codex about that concoction. If we had formalin in it, it would also have appeared because we, we didn't have anything to, 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 to hide. And in any case, we're not sharing it with the media. We're sharing it technically. Eh? How, what do we do? Eh? Because this concoction, we had to take it to Codex. So What's the Codex? It is an umbrella body which says that uh, all the standards are harmonized, conform to the international standards. And of course, it is shared by the Director General of Health Services. And UN base is the, uh, the, 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 they are the secretariat. So if, to, if we have the, 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 the results, we can share it, but not to, uh, like here. If you came to my office, I would show you everything. Why not? Because you see, doctor, there's a challenge. Um, this whole talk has been around town, and yeah. you're saying you've not heard about it, mm. and everybody is scared. Yeah. Um, and if there is actually no formally now, it's to their disadvantage because people are saying, "Look, I'm now becoming vegetarian. I'm going to grow my own, you know, to raise, raise uh, rear my own uh, animals and that kind of thing." So if there is no formally, and you're mm. saying we don't want to share this information with the media, then no. how will people know? What I'm saying now, mm. the sharing, it is of the test we carried out, mm. and as I have told you, since 2015, we have never had a case. Yes. We have never encountered formally. We also hear about it. We have heard about it. We go out, but we have not seen it. Because formally in sincerity, it smells. I don't know what dilution they are using to make it not smell. To make, to make it not, meat not change color. Eh? To make it uh, meat not be tough. Eh? Like a stone. You know, I, I, I'm also wondering, because I want also now to because even the, the, what we are doing is not going out to end today. As I have uh, told you, we started in 2015. It doesn't mean that we are going out to end today. The operation will continue up to the time when we get to the bottom of the problem. But I'm assuring 
meat consumers, for us as KCC, we have not encountered formerly in any meat. My colleague, I did do a story uh, which we were just showing earlier on, and um, there's so much ease of acquiring formalin here in Kampala. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you're the guys uh, who one would think, in conjunction, I would suppose, with Ministry of Health, and I don't know who else, as cases, uh, you should have your pulse on this. So, what are people acquiring this formalin for? Because they're acquiring it so easily. Yeah, uh, we have had uh, engagements with the National Drug Authority mm -hmm. that uh, a body that regulates importation and sale of uh, uh, drugs and chemicals. Uh, they have promised that they are going now to vigorously regulate formalin. For us as KCC, uh, that is the best we can do. And we continue now pla placing on them to make sure that the formalin is regulated. You don't, don't just go and say, I want formalin. 40,000 uh, as I have seen, without even asking you, uh, the, 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 you want now to use it for what? Huh? So do you, do you now see why people are concerned that there could be formalin in meat? Because you're you saying know, you don't find it, but people are buying this know, formalin for what? You know, but we you don't see know. now, people may be just fine to be scared, but I'm assuring them that we have not had, at least we have not got formalin in meat. And we are out every day in butcheries, trying now to figure out to, to make sure that meat is safe for human consumption in Kampala. I think uh, that's one we have tried. Hello? Uh, we, have mm. oh, we seem to have people on the line. Hello, good morning. Good morning. What's your name, sir? My name is God, the country Edison. Milton, you said? Can't see me, Edison. Can't see me. Yes, Mr. Can't see me. Yeah, I suppose that how people are being to be which are in the rural areas where those cases people can't reach. Hello? Okay, we seem to have lost him. I'm not too sure I got the question correct, but he talks about rural areas, uh, who regulates them there. Of course, this is Kampala, Capital yeah. City Authority, so I don't know, but we'll get a response of sorts. Uh, please remember, when you call us, the number is on your screen. When you call, listen the volume on your TV set so that we do not get feedback. That way you can ask with ease or make a comment. Hello, good morning. Okay, we'll get back to that in a bit. Captain, have you heard about this whole formalin talk? Uh, I've, okay, I've somebody heard. is there now. Sorry, I have to interrupt you. There. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name, sir? Hey. Hello. Hello, but reduce the volume on your TV set. We are getting feedback. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Can you speak English? You can speak English. So, uh -huh, speak English so that everybody uh, can understand what you're talking about. Do those people know who the, the largest meat sellers are in Uganda and what they do in government? I'm not sure I understand your question, sir. Yeah, Difference. because the largest meat sellers are in government itself. So, what does that mean? Oh. We lost that person. He's saying the largest meat sellers are in government, so I wanted to be sure of uh, what his insinuation is. Does that mean then they can do whatever they want and nobody uh, will raise the red flag? I don't know. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. What's your name, sir? I'm called Paddy from Chireka. Yes, Paddy. Now, I wanted to find out. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask the doctor, what, is there any other purpose of that formally? Why would it be on the market in the first place? Because it is readily available on the market. He says there's not certain samples of meat that contain formalin. Mm. If I may ask, does it have any other use? Why would it be on the market? Okay, thank you for raising that, Paddy. The question I was actually put into doctor and uh, he was laboring to explain. We will ask him again because you need to be certain. If this thing is readily available and they're saying there's no formalin, a bit of concern. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello, good morning. You're live through. Please speak to us. Okay, we seem to have lost that person. Good morning. Hello? Good morning. What's your name? Morning, sir? morning. Good morning. What's your name? Good morning. This is Bosco. Yes, Bosco. Talk to us, Bosco. Uh, that's a lie. Those people are aware of what is taking place. They are very, very aware. What Our is the lie, Bosco? Danger. Our life is at danger. Those people are aware. Okay, uh, let's be sure we can uh, substantiate the allegations we are making. So, 
Uh, it's a lie. What is the lie? And uh, the lives are in danger. Why exactly? Please help us understand. Oh, we lost Bosco. Uh, <laughs> I would have loved to hear from Bosco, which is the lie. We have uh, talked about many things. So I need to say doctor has lied about A, B, C, and so on. Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Could you reduce the volume on your TV set? We are getting feedback. Hello. That's better. Good morning. Good morning. What's I'm your name, Alex sir? Zentaro. Yes, Alex. Yeah, the doctor is saying they last did the test in uh, 2015. No, he said they have been doing the test since 2015, if I had him right. No, I thought he, this is what he said, but we've not heard of any new tests he carried out in 2017, mm. 2016. So we are worried. We are really worried. They, 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 it's not convincing. It's not convincing. At least he would have said he... The 2016 or 2017, they carried out some tests. Mm. Okay, we'll have the doctor answer that too. Several concerns here. Huh? Hello, good morning. Hello. Hello. Good morning, what's your name? Hello, good morning. Hello. Good morning, what is your name? I'm Francis from Michigan. We, we are getting feedback on your TV. Eh? Hello? Could you kindly reduce the volume on your TV set? We are getting feedback. Okay, that's clearer now. So what's your name, sir? Sorry, we, we had to drop that call. Please, when you call us, uh, reduce Hello? the volume on your TV set. I know some of you like to hear yourselves. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello? Good morning. What's your name, sir? Good morning, MTV. Good morning. What's your name? Joel. Yes, sir. What I have realized is these people are aware of whatever is happening. I mm. want to I want to congratulate this gentleman of of Abatwell. Mm. He's doing good job. But the process the meet with is the Abatwa reaching to the 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 boosters. That's where contamination comes from. Mm. And ever since this problem came up to today, people are in danger. They are all in danger. I think yesterday she was talking. He noted right that they have totally cut losses in whatever business they are doing. They collect taxes from uh, the butchers, the other church and so on. But KCC in one way or the other is letting them down. Let KCC go down, expose the reality, other than the doctor hiding them. And uh, expose them. Let them expose them so that we can get back to eating meat. Otherwise, we are in, in a fear. Other than the doctor just telling us, you know what? There's no chemicals, there's no what. But yet, these chemicals are on market. What are they doing on the market? They were obtaining from these people's uh, uh, butcheries and so on. At the end of the day, they are saying they bought them to be taken home to do what? If someone died at home that you are going to treat it using the former room. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Let's speak uh, two other phone calls and then we'll get feedback from our guests. Hello, good morning. Hello. Okay, we'll, we'll pause the phone calls for now. If time allows, we'll get back to them. A couple of uh, issues that have been raised, many of them pointed to doctor, but just before I get back to doctor, Captain, have you heard of this formalin talk? I know you're looking at an article here. Yeah. Experts warning I, wa I want uh, to against tell the you, effects of formalin and I want and to so tell on. the people of this country, the meat consumers, and also the international people, because you have told it's coming to our place and you are exporting meat right now. This is a very, unfor this is a very unfortunate story and a new vision. We deserve an explanation and we are going to compensate us for damages. What do you mean? You're bringing in new vision now. So what are you talking about? This is what I'm having before you is a new vision. It's straight from new vision. Yeah, and we have also run a similar story. We've talked about... Uh, I'm coming to you. Mm -hmm. Drugs made for dead bodies. Uh, mm -hmm. Meat, insane with drugs meant for dead bodies. Meat, insane, treated with drugs meant for dead bodies. This is a new vision. Okay, uh, you'll take on that um, issue with new vision. But uh, here my issue is, away from new vision, mm. you can hear what people are saying. They are saying, look, there are serious allegations out there. We're concerned about our health because, like that story that we did, 
my reporter easily went out and uh, found that people can easily buy formalin with relative ease. So what are they using it for? And you are saying... First of all, let us understand what mm. is a formalin. Mm -hmm. you, when you want to treat a, a disease, mm. you don't treat a simple term. Mm. You don't want to refer to this report, which is very damaging and which is, a, which is false. The man in New Vision mm. are the two versions. The man in, in vision knows what formalin is. Mm. He knows what formalin what? Is. Mm -hmm. According to him, formalin, which we don't use at all, which we have never used. I only knew about formalin when it was applied on my mother's body. And it became as hard. So what do you think people are buying it for? Those that are buying it? Because it's readily available on the market. 40,000 or the you know, we, we have... Uh, according to these experts, mm. it is a food preservative. Mm. According to experts, maybe they are preserving certain foods, but not meat. We don't use now meat. You can read the story. Why? What our worry is? Mm. Why did the new vision say it is used for dead bodies? When is they know, when they know the story, is it formally used for dead bodies? It's not made for dead bodies alone. Mm. It is not. It's made for what else? Read here. This is new vision. You, you tell us what you've according read. The to, according to uh, an expert, mm. we interacted with a man who published his story. Mm. He told the man that in Europe, formalin can be used as a food preservative, but under the control mm. eh, of a, a chemist or somebody expert on this drug. Mm. If I had this information, why did he give the people of the country a proper information that formalin... Mm. Mm. Which we don't use actually can also be used as a food preservative. Maybe that's why people are buying it. Okay, let me bring Not the doctor me. here in. Um, mm. You are the technical person here. Formalin, what, mm. what are the uses of formalin? Because people are acquiring it out there, readily available. Uh, yeah, it is. Formalin, mm. uh, which has a certificate name as form formaldehyde, mm. as we have said, in Uganda is mainly they use it for embalming yes. bodies. Mm -hmm. But in the food industry in Uganda, we don't use formalin. Does it have any other uses uh, uh, from it, what we use uh, it here? Other oh. than uh, disinfection. You can use it for disinfecting, like uh, theaters and the like. Mm. It, can, it can be used now to kill bacteria. Huh? But not in food. It can be used as a disinfectant, but not as a what? Formalin can be used as a disinfectant, but not as an agent of food preservation. When somebody says that, uh, Casey says, oh me, as a person I'm hiding, I also eat meat. I have relatives that eat meat. Why I should I hide? What, we, 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 there, there, there is no reason to hide. If we're using, I would say, I'm sorry, we have been using it. But I have would never you actually made, say you're sorry? If we're using it, yes. Yeah. I, I, I would say it is unfortunate. Yeah? You get the information. Yeah. I, I would say it is unfortunate. We didn't know, but yes, sincerely, yeah. we have not it's used the formalin. We have, have not made. It's I have not made a factory or a place or a butchery that uses formalin. When they say that, why uh, the test you carried out in? Uh, May or in 2015, 2017. You know, investigation is not only on lab confirmation. You can use investigation, you start with your sight. What are you seeing? What are you smelling? There is what we call organic analysis. Mm. What are you smelling? What are you seeing? Eh? What are you testing? All of those would have revealed that there is formalin somewhere before we go for laboratory confirmation. Because you go to the laboratory to confirm only what you have found on the market. That's why now when we found this concoction on the market and we felt that it was not good for using on fries, we had now to go in to confirm what it was. But if we didn't find it, we would not have gone to test it. So you first use investigation starts with the seeing. Doctor, as, as the head of health inspection in Kampala Capital City Authority, mm. 
your jurisdiction is Kampala, mm. capital city, mm. and uh, its environs. Mm. People in Kampala and its environs mm. are easily acquiring formally, like my, my colleague did that story, went into this shop and acquired it, 20,000, 40,000 in this and, and so people are buying it readily. That, 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 does that concern you at all? Because you are well, saying it's majorly yeah. used for embalming bodies. These people are not buying this formally to take it home to that's embalm why, anybody. Yeah, so that's why now... Are, are you on the lookout? Are you when, carrying out investigations when, uh, to that effect? When they said that formalin was easily being acquired, mm. that's why now we engaged, we engaged the National Drug Authority, a regulatory body mm. that controls the importation because formalin is not made here. It is the one now that is responsible for importation, sale of drugs and chemicals that are used in the health industry. So that's why we, we, we engaged the National Drug Authority. And even on Thursday, we are supposed to meet again. So as now to, uh, to get feedback from them, how far have they gone? So we are not sitting, as you can see now, when we get when we are challenged and we know that formalin is easily being sorted and you can go downtown and get it that's why now we are saying nda why, uh, what is your role because you know as KCC, say we, we also have limitation there's no way i can go and uh, uh, have a whip on somebody on a pharmacy that is selling formally it is the national drug authority to do it Okay, I hear there's many phone calls. Uh, let me pick one or two. I know my time is running out quickly, but I'll pick one or two and then uh, we shall wrap it up. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, kindly reduce the volume on your TV set. I'm getting feedback here. Yes, good morning, Joe. Good morning. What's your name, ma'am? This is Daphne. Daphne, yes, Daphne. Daphne. Yeah, as a food scientist, it's really heartbreaking for people to come on TV. Mm. And, and calm light to us. What, what lie have they told? Let's point that to that. That formalin is not used in, uh, in food products. It is mm. a known secret. Yes. It is used to preserve meat. These people are using it. It preserves milk. Mm. Every day we are drinking milk with formalin. So, uh, <sighs> Daphne, as a scientist, have you carried out some study and uh, you have realized that there's uh, milk in Kampala that has formalin, there's meat in Kampala yes, that has yes. formalin? It is a known secret. Move out. It's because you're in Okay, we lost Daphne before she could substantiate. Uh, because when you say it's a known secret, move out, and she say move out and test. I, I don't know how to test. I'm not uh, that technical. But, but I would like to hear that uh, you have carried out these tests and perhaps shared with the authorities. Because that's important. Because when a scientist says that, I, I get concerned. Okay, we'll pick uh, perhaps one final call and we'll wrap it up. Hello? Okay, let's put a cap to this. Um, Can I say something about Daphne? I, I am as worried, as confused as you see me. Uh, because... Um, I'm not technical in these things. And I'm sure many other viewers are now getting confused and concerned. <laughs> you know, so how, how do we reassure them? Because people should continue to enjoy meat that uh, you avail. They should continue to produce it, to, you know, to drink milk that is availed elsewhere. You want to say something? I want to say something about Daphne, Dr. Daphne. Dr. Daphne is partly right when it comes to milk. Mm. I stopped buying milk. This milk, which is brought from the villages, mm. I had a baby, and we were feeding on that milk. It, wa it had a bad smell. Mm. Then when we asked, it told us that they use uh, drugs meant for dead bodies in the milk. Mm. That's a long time ago. So and you're saying it's used in milk, but you're saying it's not used in meat. Never. Because you have an abattoir. Not because of that. Mm. I told you I, I, I take milk, eh? but I stopped taking milk. Or you take meat, rather? I take both meat and milk, mm, mm. but I stopped buying that milk mm. because of what I had and what, what I proved myself, because I used to take it. But with meat, I want to assure all Ugandans and the entire world, we don't use formalin to preserve food or to preserve meat. We don't even preserve meat. What for? Well, we, it can rot we, if you're we, having no, it, you know, for days and you're not buying it. We slaughter 100 cows and uh, three hours it is all bought. Perhaps then the issue would be Sometimes the Sometimes we go into the butchers. But when, when it comes to butchers, I don't know. But when it comes to abattoirs, mm. we slaughter 100, 200 and it is all gone. Doctor, now the milk issue has come in and uh, still the, as a health inspector, you know, how, how do you guide us here? We That one now, like, uh, let me maybe respond to Daphne. 
it is unfortunate the scientist can be coroner in TV and claim that is a secret that is known by her only, not even sharing it with us. I think. I don't know where she started from, uh, if scientists uh, can behave that way. When you got, have something, you should eat it out, and as you said, you bring it to the people who are responsible. For formerly in the medic, sincerely, it is also an unfortunate allegation. And it is still substantiated. There is no way we can say that medic is uh, the use formerly in the medic. But I, I will take it up with the Diet Development Authority. To me because it is the regulatory body that, con uh, that is responsible for the safety of milk and we see what to do. And we, we, even now we have been moving with them. We moved with them in, in uh, Kawempa and Rubaga and uh, the tests were no. We didn't find the uh, formalin. You know what the but doctor, don't you see a problem with that? Because you see now as a consumer, mm. here is my confusion. Mm. There is formalin that's readily available on the market. Mm. Um, the scientists who are saying it's in milk and meat, you the inspectors, you're saying it's not in any of those, mm. and it is readily available. So as a consumer who is not technical in these things, I'm seated back and thinking, so who do I believe? Or what do I believe? Because formalin is readily available. I'm assuring you that as far as I'm concerned, we have never had mm. formalin in meat. Since I'm uh, hearing it for the first time that is also in milk, I'm going to take it up with Direct Development Authority, so that the meat and to, to ensure that the meat and the mm. milk that is being consumed in the Kampara, this in the Kampara, mm. is wholesome. That's when I'm going to, I'm assuring you, we as KCC, we shall continue doing everything possible to make sure that. Meat and the milk that is served in the Kampala is wholesome. Okay, we are going to hold you to that word. You mm. can be sure this is a story that we mm. are not about to let go. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep tabs on you. I'm available. On uh, the abattoirs mm. and on the butcheries. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us and for talking to us this morning. Appreciate it. Come, thank you. Okay, so that's it for the big story. Look, I <laughs> am not uh, that scientific in as far as these things are concerned. And uh, neither are many of you are viewers. Uh, so... I, I don't know what to say. Let's be safe. Uh, what is safe? What is not? I don't know. I'm as confused as you probably are. The authorities are convincing us that uh, they are going to be on the lookout. Uh, but let's be on the lookout as well. That's the big story for today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Joel Senyonyi. Good morning.